Hello and welcome back again to this course on principles of polymer synthesis. Today is lecture number 13 and uh, as per the theme of this particular week, we are going to continue with the discussion of principles of radical chain polymerization. If you recall where we ended uh, in the last class, we were talking about the relationship of coupling and disproportionation with the kinetic chain length and the degree of polymerization. So, let us start right there. So, we have x n bar number of average degree of polymerization is equals to 2 nu, nu being the kinetic chain length when you have termination through 100 percent coupling and x n bar is equals to nu when you have termination through 100 percent disproportionation. Now, we are trying to have a general relationship of x n bar with nu. So, we are trying to derive that. Let us say you have n propagating chains and let us say A is the fraction of termination that happens through coupling. So, that means it is basically the fraction of coupling. So, in that case 1 minus A is the fraction of disproportionation because we have assumed that the chain termination happens only through coupling or disproportionation. So, if A is the fraction of coupling and you have n propagating chains, then basically what you have is A n number of initiator fragments. corresponds to this fraction of coupling, you have a n number of initiator fragments that are involved and how many number of polymer molecules are being produced, how many number of polymer molecules are being produced, you basically have a n divided by 2 number of polymer molecules. because two growing chain have come together to produce one polymer chain. So, you will have for fraction of coupling A, A n by 2 number of polymer molecules. So, correspondingly if you look at the disproportionation, if you look at the disproportionation, then so 1 minus A is the fraction of disproportionation. So, correspondingly the number of initiator fragments that are involved is 1 minus A into N. So, this is the number of number of initiator fragments and if you have two chains that are coming together and terminating through disproportionation then ultimately you will have two chains only left as the final dead polymer chains. So, then how many number of polymer chains are being produced? It is the same. So, number of polymers or polymer chains, polymer molecules. So, what is the average number of initiator fragment per polymer molecule because that is necessary in order to find out whether you have how much extent to how much extent you have coupling and to how much extent you have disproportionation because as I told you if you have the number average number of initiator fragments per polymer chain if it is 2 that would mean you have 100 percent coupling which is occurring for termination. So, termination is basically being affected by 100 percent coupling. So, if you have one initiator fragment on an average per polymer molecule that will, that will mean close to 100 percent of termination is occurring through disproportionation. So, let us say B is the average number of initiator fragments per polymer molecule then that is nothing but equal to the total number of initiator fragments by total number of polymer molecules. So, total number of initiator fragments is nothing but a n plus this plus this 1 minus a into n and total number of polymer molecules is nothing but this plus this. So, a n by 2 plus 1 minus a into n and if you work it out this will come out as 2 divided by 2 minus a. So, in general what we can have as an expression of x n bar is something like this. 
x n bar is equals to b into nu that means equals to 2 by 2 minus a into nu where a is a fraction of coupling. So, if you have 100 percent coupling that means your a is equals to 1 that means your x n bar becomes 2 nu that means the degree of polymerization number of degree of number average degree of polymerization is equal to 2 times the kinetic chain length. If you have 0 percent coupling then x n bar becomes equals to nu that means number average degree of polymerization is equals to kinetic chain length because two growing polymer chains that are coming together two growing polymer chains that are coming together they are forming ultimately two polymer chains. So, these two polymer chains they are dead polymer chains at the end. So, this is kinetic chain length nu. So, this has kinetic chain length nu. So, if you have 100 percent disproportionation then the polymer chain length basically is nu which is nothing but your degree of polymerization and if you have 100 percent coupling then these two chains will come together and ultimately you will have a dead polymer chain which has a chain length which will be 2 nu which is nothing but your degree of polymerization that is the physical understanding and this is your general expression of x n bar here. So, now let us do a problem that will emphasize this particular idea and also in relation to that problem we will tell you one of the ways in which you can determine small f which is the initiator efficiency. So, let us say you have you are using AIBN as the initiator which is your azo isobutyro nitrile azo isobutyro nitrile C H 3 C H 3 C N. So, when it dissociates how can you find out the small f the initiator efficiency for reactions involving A i b n. So, this nitrogen will be evolved when it dissociates. So, basically if you follow the evolution of nitrogen you can find out how many radicals have been produced. Now, correspondingly to this number of radicals whether you have created that many polymer chains or not if you have created less number of polymer chains then correspondingly a small f value will be less than 1 and how do you find that out you have to actually find out the number average molecular weight of the polymer and then you can correlate these two things if you know the number average degree of polymerization and correspondingly the number average molecular weight of the polymer then you know how many polymer chains basically have been created and how many radicals were actually produced also you already know from your initiator molecule from the evolution of nitrogen gas. So, you can correlate that and you can find out the small f value. So, let us say we have a problem something like this we are taking styrene and you are polymerizing this and making polystyrene and you are using 14 C labeled A i b n as the initiator 14 C. So, you can actually follow. So, this is a radioactive isotope. So, you can follow how much of 14 C is in incorporated in the polymer. So, you know how much of A i b n is incorporated so on and so forth because that is necessary to find out the average number of initiator fragments per polymer molecule. So, now this is polymerized to a number average degree of polymerization of 1.52 into 10 to the power 4. So, I am just defining the problem using this particular initiator and the activity of A i b n activity of A i b n is uh, 9.81 into 10 to the power 7 counts per minute per mole in a scintillation counter. So, basically if you have a high energy particle that are actually also being created say in a radioactive uh, element. So, these high energy particles will bombard in this machine and correspondingly uh, a current might be generated and you can find out uh, the energy. So, that is how the activity is measured here. 
because it has radioactive carbon here. So, this many counts per minute per mole and another information is given in this process the polystyrene that you have produced 3.22 grams of polystyrene that is produced. So, 3.22 gram of that has an activity of 203 counts per minute in this counter. Of course, it will have an activity because this 14 C will be incorporated into the polymer because the initiator fragment that is initiating the polymer chain that is being incorporated into the polymer chain. So, it will have some 14 C. So, you have 203 counts per minute. So, the question is what is the mode of termination? If you have all this information, so the question will be what is the mode of termination? So, let us do the solution here. What is the X n bar that is the number of average degree of polymerization for this particular process? It is already given. It is uh, 1.52 into 10 to the power 4. So, what is the molecular weight? Here comes the importance of molecular weight. What is the molecular weight? Because this is required to be known in order to find out the mechanism of termination, whether it is going through coupling or whether it is going to disproportionation. This is also required to find out small f that is the efficiency of the uh, initiator. So, this m n bar is x n bar into m naught, m naught is the average molecular weight of the structural unit. So, x n bar is nothing but 1.52 into 10 to the power 4 and when you are looking at polystyrene you have so, you have C 8 H 8 and you can find out that your molecular weight average molecular weight per structural unit, unit is 104 and if you do the calculation here it, it comes out as 158 point. So, this is into 104 158.08 into 10 to the power 4 because I have worked this out already, but I am trying to explain the principle to you. So, this is the M n bar for the polystyrene. Now, it is also told that 3.22 grams of polystyrene has this much activity. So, what is the number of moles for 3.22 grams of polystyrene? So, the number of moles will be nothing but 3.22 divided by 158.08 into 10 to the power 4, which comes out as 2.02 into 10 to the power minus 6 moles. So, these many moles have an activity of 203 counts per minute. So, what is the activity per mole of polystyrene? What is the activity per mole of polystyrene? So, activity per mole is nothing but 203 divided by 2.02 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, it will be 100.5 into 10 to the power 6 counts per mole. Now, so this is the activity of polystyrene per mole and it is already given that the activity of AIBN per mole is this. So, the question is then how many I mean this, this answer you have to find out in order to find the final answer to the what is the mode of termination. So, from here we are trying to find out how many moles of AIBN have actually gone in 1 mole of polystyrene. Activity of 1 mole of AIBN is known, activity of 1 mole of polystyrene is known. So, if you take the ratio, it will be this. one. So, that means, per polystyrene polymer molecule on an average you have, so uh, per polystyrene polymer molecule on an average you have one molecule of AIBN or per mole of polystyrene on an average you have one mole of AIBN, which means now one molecule of AIBN will actually give two radicals. So, that means one mole of AIBN or one molecule of AIBN is equivalent to having, so having one molecule of AIBN per polystyrene molecule is equivalent to having two initiator fragments per polymer molecule. 
because one molecule of AIBN actually produces two initiator fragments. So, here that means per polystyrene molecule you have two initiator fragments. So, which nothing but which is nothing but an indication that you have the termination that is happening through coupling. So, that is the answer to your problem. <clears throat> so, by doing this particular exercise, we have now demonstrated that how you can find out experimentally that what is the extent of coupling, what is the extent of disproportionation, assuming that there is no other way in which this growing chain is being terminated. And uh, I have told you something related to the efficiency of the initiator and overall I have told you that if you know the number average molecular weight of your polymer, so and correspondingly you know how many uh, radicals have been generated, we will do a problem related to that after. So, how many radicals have been generated from the initiator, so you can take these two things into account and you can find out the efficiency of the initiator. So, that part that problem we will do after after we have finished the full exercise of discussing uh, you know different termination modes of, of uh, chain growth reactions because coupling and disproportionation they are not the only two termination modes available, there are other termination modes that are also available for chain transfer reactions. Okay. For uh, chain growth reactions excuse me. So, I was talking about chain transfer because now is the time I am going to come to the concept of chain transfer. Because when we say chain transfer, we basically say that this is a process through which also you can have termination of growing chains other than your coupling and disproportionation pathway. So, by definition chain transfer means you have a growing chain and you have a reactive end that end if you are looking at you will destroy that growing radical species. So, that means at the end you have a dead polymer chain where you do not have any radical, but that radical is being transferred to another species that has reacted with this growing radical in itself. So, now the chain will grow from the other species that is the process of chain transfer. I have given you one example before where I was talking about initiator efficiency say you, you had a benzoyl peroxide that reacted with MN dot and then benzoyl peroxide one unit went and attached to MN dot and the radical was transferred to the benzoyl part. So, ultimately a benzoyl radical was produced. So, ultimately it is a transfer of the chain from the growing polymer chain which was MN dot to benzoyl radical which actually can grow the polymer chain again but it is a chain transfer reaction. So, this is a process through which you have actually terminated your growing chain. So, it was like this your MN dot and you had benzoyl peroxide and you had this kind of process So, basically this is also a chain transfer reaction because in this process you have terminated the growth of this chain and basically the chain the growth of the chain has been transferred. So, this radical has been transferred from, transferred from this growing chain to this particular species and this can actually initiate the growth of another chain. So, in general this is one particular example where an initiator is participating in chain transfer. So, in general what you can write down as a chain transfer reaction is like this this is a propagating species and you have one substance say called X A which will transfer say a hydrogen or another atom to this growing radical and terminate this growing radical. So, that is called chain transfer process. So, this is your let us say you say this is a chain transfer agent or a component chain transfer compound. I am not writing down chain transfer agent because typically you are using that for specific kinds of compounds that are doing chain transfer. So, M n dot plus X A and then you have chain transfer rate constant as K T R, T R indicating transfer and 
you will have this x, so let us say this x is transferred to M n, this x could be a hydrogen or some other atom and this radical is transferred to A, it becomes A dot. Now, this A dot could further react with one monomer molecule and start the growth of another polymer chain. So, rate constant is K A and it starts the growth of another polymer chain or let us say you can say that this reinitiates the polymerization because it has stopped the polymerization it can reinitiate a polymerization this A dot. Now, this chain transfer reactions then they are like chain breaking reactions because they break a growing polymer chain they start another chain, but they have already broken a growing polymer chain. Now, several situations involving the relative values of K A, K transfer and K P can be envisaged. Something that is very important for us is to consider this particular scenario, where your rate constant for polymerization is much greater than rate constant for chain transfer. However, the rate constant for reinitiation of polymerization is close to the rate constant of propagation or polymerization. If that is so, then rate of polymerization remains unaffected. Rate of polymerization remains unaffected because the rate at which the propagation is taking place that is close to the rate at which the reinitiation re is taking place. So, basically what is happening is that more number of polymer chains are produced, but the polymer chains are being shortened, but the rate at which they are being produced that is the same because K A is close to K P and K P is much higher than K transfer. So, that way your rate of polymerization will remain unaffected, but your X n bar which is the number of highest degree of polymerization that will decrease to a large extent. So, this is a situation that we are going to consider now for a detailed analysis. So, under this kind of condition your X n bar is no longer equal to 2 by 2 a into nu. This is the expression that we have derived before. So, that means X n bar is related to the kinetic chain length when we have only coupling or disproportionation as the means of termination, but when we have other processes chain breaking reactions like chain transfer reactions, then you have to calculate the X n bar in a different way. Kinetic chain length is not related to the X n bar like this. Then what you have to do? your process is like this X n bar is rate of polymerization divided by sum of the rates of all chain breaking reactions. In this you can also consider your coupling and disproportionation as, as chain breaking reactions. So, that way your rate of polymerization is nothing but R p, R p and sum of the rates of all the chain breaking reactions is. So, you know this 2, so nu is basically R p by R t, it was R p by R t your kinetic chain length. So, if you are considering that particular situation then it was 2 divided by 2 minus a into R p by R t when you do not have. So, this relation was valid when you do not have any other process of chain breaking reaction other than coupling or, or uh, disproportionation. So, that part will be there, but then you have to add all the other rates of the chain breaking reactions, all the other rates of the chain transfer reactions. So, if you look at that part, so your nu is nothing but R p divided by R t. So, it was 2 by 2 minus a if you take that to the denominator that will be like this, but now you have termination through other pathways also. For example, you have termination by chain transfer to the monomer, it could have a termi termination by chain transfer to the monomer also. 
a growing polymer radical could react with a monomer and then the chain could be transferred to the monomer. Now, the monomer can grow the chain again, but this already growing chain has been stopped. So, monomer could participate in chain transfer. So, for monomer then this rate constant of transfer you are putting m just to tell you this is the rate constant of transfer and what is the rate of transfer reaction this kind of rate of transfer reaction rate of transfer of this kind of reaction. So, your m n dot reacts with x a to produce m n x plus x a dot this is your chain transfer reaction. So, if you write the rate of chain transfer reaction R t is nothing but k transfer x a because x a is the molecule that participates in the chain transfer into m n dot into x a that is the rate of chain transfer for the agent x a. So, in this case m n dot is nothing but m dot all the radical concentrations. So, m dot into m. So, x a is basically you are replacing x a by m because the monomer is basically the uh, compound that is participating in chain transfer. So, that is why it is k transfer m, m dot into m. What you can have is a compound specifically added for the purpose of chain transfer from outside that is a chain transfer agent. So, let us say we put that as s, then the rate will be k tra transfer s into m dot into s. I am putting S instead of a compound added from outside, it could be a solvent also. The solvent of the reaction can also participate in this kind of chain transfer. In that case, this XA will be your solvent molecule, or you could have a chain transfer to initiator. So, that will be M dot into I. Chain transfer to initiator, an example we have already given here. This is an example of chain transfer to the initiator benzoyl peroxide. So, the chain is transferred to this initiator, the growing chain is stopped and another initiating radical is being produced and that starts the reinitiation of polymerization much in the same way as your generic, uh, generic scheme of this. So, this is the whole expression then. Now, if you are looking at this particular expression, let us try to simplify this. Of course, if you do not simplify some extra terms will come, but overall the concept will be the same. Let us say there is no process of termination through disproportionation. I mean one of the processes of termination we just remove. Let us say you have termination through only coupling as well as other chain transfer reactions because coupling and disproportionation they are basically not chain transfer reaction. A new radical is not being created. They are making dead polymer directly and nothing else. Chain transfer reaction are, is making dead polymer also but it is creating another radical. So, that is the difference. So, in between coupling and disproportionation let us say only coupling is occurring let us try to simplify this. So, then a equals to 1. So, if a equals to 1 then your expression becomes R p divided by R t divided by 2 plus k transfer m into m dot into m plus all these terms. Now, Let us define this term k transfer divided by k p that is a transfer rate constant with respect to that particular species that is uh, responsible for the chain transfer reaction. So, that k transfer divided by the rate of propagation corresponding the rate constant for propagation the rate constant for propagation this ratio let us divide that as the chain transfer constant. So, this gives you the capacity of that particular compound for the chain transfer. If this value is higher, that means the chain transfer to that particular compound is higher. Let us say you are talking about chain transfer of the to the initiator, that means your x a here is the initiator. So, you are talking about chain transfer to the initiator, then initiator chain transfer constant is nothing but k transfer for this particular reaction m n dot plus you have the initiator molecule and it is. So, initiator molecule basically say so let us say your x a is your initiator molecule. 
So, one part comes to M n to terminate the chain and then you have A dot that is forming. So, this is the k transfer that k transfer divided by the rate of propagation of that particular propagating species that ratio gives you the chain transfer constant. So, if it is for the monomer that is the k transfer for the monomer then your x a is m. If it is for the solvent then it is the k transfer constant k transfer uh, for, uh, that means the rate constant for the transfer for the solvent. If it is the initiator then it is the k transfer i something like that. So, this ratio then in general tells you k transfer divided by k p that tells you the corresponding species what is the chain transfer constant. So, if we now incorporate this particular term in this expression then what will happen your expression was this R p divided by R t by 2 so on and so forth. Now, if you incorporate this term here and let us say you take the inverse of that 1 divided by x n. So, then it will become R t divided by R p so on and so forth. Okay. So, that will be nothing but 1 divided by 1 divided by in fact, the R t will go up. So, let us draw it like this for the let us simplify it further it will be R t divided by 2 R p because you know it was 2 R p divided by R t. So, you are taking the inverse of that. So, that will be R t divided by 2 R p R t divided by 2 R p plus C m and let us also divide throughout by m dot into m. So, that this term will go and then you will have only k t r divided by k. So, it will be something like c m plus c s into s by m plus c i into i by m. So, you see here if you are taking an inverse of this then it will be R t divided by R p like this R t divided by R p. If you are taking the inverse of this it will be nothing but k transfer m into m dot into m divided by R p. Now, R p R p is nothing but k p into m dot into m. So, that m dot into m will come here. So, m dot into m will cancel and that so it will be k t r by k p k t r by k p k t r by k p and here the m will not cancel. So, this m dot only goes. So, basically it is the inverse of that. So, it will be c m plus c s because c s is nothing but k transfer divided by k p and correspondingly this is s and this is i and you are actually dividing by m because that m is coming. So, this is a, a wrong paraphrase. So, you are not dividing by m, but the R p has already come in the denominator. So, that the expression if you put already you will get this final term. So, what we will do is that we will stop here and we will continue to explore this particular equation in the next class uh, in terms of how we can design the polymerization reaction to obtain a particular molecular weight. Because you already see if in this particular equation you have this x n bar that is the number average molecular weight already incorporated and how this number average molecular weight is being affected by different kinds of chain transfer reactions. How it is affected by chain transfer to monomer, how it is affected by chain transfer to say solvent or a chain transfer agent because we are using that as substitutes to each other we are putting S there. How it is affected by the uh, chain transfer to initiator all these things can be quantified from this particular equation because x n bar is also related to all these different chain transfer constants and their corresponding concentrations. So, that is the importance of this equation. We will come to explore this equation more in the next class. Till then thank you and goodbye.